Hey guys, it's Andy here. Uh, yeah, I got it up on the wall. So, um, yeah, I'm using uh, little braces. I don't know what they're from. I think they might have been from a mirror. And then just hooks. And uh, behind this styrofoam is cinder block. So it's pretty well secured. There's a whole bunch of problems. Uh, so the first one, I, I drywalled this, so if there is some kind of fire, this drywall will suck up some of the heat. This drywall will too. This is highly flammable foam. It's like an inch or inch and a half thick. It's, it's very thick, very thick foam. So probably an inch and a half. And behind it's cinder block. Uh, up on the roof is, uh, is drywall again, so... Um, this stuff though is incredibly flammable, so I would prefer not to have my power wall anywhere near it, or I'd just remove the styrofoam altogether, but, uh, that's a whole different story. But anyways, so, ideally, so I've got some drywall down here as well. But anyways, yeah, it's up on the wall, it's all hooked, so I can even take it off. I have, uh, very short cables right here, so... Very minimal. I put dielectric grease and I sanded up all the contacts heavily everywhere. Dielectric grease here, dielectric grease there. Heavily sanded up, you know, cleaned up really nicely. So, yeah, it's uh, it's doing good. This, right now, as it stands, it's somewhere around 2 kilowatt hours of power that this thing's got going for it, which is awesome. Awesome, awesome. Uh, this guy here. Right there on the heat sink, there's uh, 66 volts AC. So I'm gonna have to figure out that, maybe take the whole thing apart and figure it out again because I uh, I did a lot of testing and there was never any voltage on it and now suddenly there's voltage on it. So something's gone wrong. I don't know what, but huge problem. So I'll, I'll take it apart. I'll, I'll give her a good look over, no big deal. So anyways, yeah, I've um, built the wall parts of these one, two, three, four of them, and then five, six, seven. So I just need to buy one more sheet of uh, plywood, and uh, then I'll have all my walls ready. Uh, that'll be excellent. Uh, I've got this wire here I found. Um, I'm going to probably use it so that's excellent this is the old wire i was using before and uh, i just have it wrapped up so i'll use it in the future but i figure i put it there so it's out of the way but easy to find because it's a bit of a rat's nest sometimes but yeah um next thing so yeah i have this one ready i've got like a jig i guess you could call that holds it all together and then i'm going to get my 214 wire the vise and the uh, drill and then I'm going to spin it together get that all nice and going and then I'll solder this up this part is definitely the longest part of the whole process of manufacturing these walls is soldering all those joints but it's much faster than having to put the fuses in so I'm still working on my uh, fuse design because it's not safe to not have a fuse on each individual battery but uh, it's uh, just a risk that I'm going to take uh, because I'm not using my power wall uh, technically at all. I'm just testing and practicing, so it's not a big deal. I have uh, these are the batteries left, and then this stuff is probably garbage. That's um, these ones are probably just garbage, short-circuited ones. These ones have something wrong, so they have to be all taken apart. These ones are three, groups of three. So I'm, I don't know what I'll do with them, but I still have to test them as well. Uh, but I don't know what to do with them exactly. All these need repairing with a spot welder. So probably my next purchase is going to be a spot welder. Or building my own using, I don't know, my power wall as the power source. I don't know. Well, you need like 200 amps, I was told, or more. To do a spot welder so that thing can only do 40 50 amps so maybe using super capacitors 
but that's the same price as just buying a spot welder so what's the point right all right so i definitely have this is just full of high quality batteries in packs of two these are all my really good ones this is definitely enough to do an entire wall so i'm, I'm very happy about that that's that's awesome and uh yeah there's my uh there's my old 24 volt inverter the reason why i never used it is because it's a modified sine wave and it's a ups it's it's fucking junk sorry but it's junk so whatever no big deal and uh just ignore this this was for work it's just an easier way to you know be at a work site just drill two screws in the wall and then hang it up so no one's stepping on your chargers so i use that once in a while but anyway so yeah it's running great uh, other than electrocuting me which is annoying I'll, i think i'll just end up buying the 25 amp charger off ebay it's a bit of money but i think it's worth it in the end um i put dielectric grease on everything sanded it um let's see i got the walls built uh next i want to talk about um some of my inspirations some of the guys that you know i've i've taken a lot from so my wall design is similar to adam welch who has a very small and simple version of this very very simplified uh, spaced out uh, Paul Kinnett has a very similar wall, but it doesn't have the electronics up there like mine does. Um, I didn't really, he, I wish he would make another video explaining his a bit more. HB Powerwall, I watch his videos a lot, but nothing that I ever made here. Um, I don't think I, I learned anything or got anything from him. Probably because I've, I had seen other YouTube videos before his that already taught me those things. But I like watching his videos a lot. Average Joe, he's the one that I, uh, the reason why I started building this is because of that inverter I had, that UPS system. It was 24 volts, uh, Average Joe. He made a video about how to turn a UPS into an 18650, you know, inverter system and he talked about how how simple a 7s is with 24 volt inverters so that's that's really what pushed me because the 4s 4 yeah 4s and 3s is is kind of a little is is really fucky to get 12 volts working fine with 3s and 4s you know it's there is no perfect middle ground unfortunately you're either overshooting or you're undershooting, right? So when he when he said he's like, oh, you know, it's you know, 22 volts, uh, 32 volts is that one, and he's like, hey, like 7s actually uh, runs really well with uh, already existing equipment. So I said, okay, that's what I'm gonna do, because I've been researching it for for months, possibly years before his video and i saw his video i'm like okay this is it this is what i'm gonna do and yeah it's done i did it i did it. so thank you very much to uh average joe the videos where i got the idea for the batteries and twisting the the 214 wire together to make up the each each line um i can't find those videos i don't know who i learned that from um, the shunt, uh, I think it was Average Joe, I watched a video of his about the shunt, and I was like, holy shit, alright, I guess I need one of those. That was actually recently, I didn't consider needing a shunt until like, possibly like three, four weeks ago, or more, which is kind of sad, but whatever, <laughs> you know, no big deal. Um, yeah, I don't know, just a lot of work. Um, uh, J-Hup Garcia, he's a really good one. He's the first YouTuber I started watching that was talking about 18650 batteries. So, I, him and his, uh, Samba bus, I, I started watching him from possibly the beginning. So, that's years now that he's had, uh, those YouTube videos up and he's been working on the stuff and getting better and better. So, it's, um, 
you know, he was the first one that I started watching and being like, oh, okay, this is, this is actually, uh, viable now. And then I think HB Powerwall was the next guy that I found, and then Average Joe, because the, those guys talk to each other quite a bit, so, you know, just, uh, through interaction, found him. And then Adam Welch and Paul Kinnett, they were... YouTubers commented on one of my previous videos uh, mentioning those guys, and uh, I'd never heard of them before, so uh, Paul Kinnett, his is very similar, but he made his YouTube video about his in August of 2017, and I didn't start buying parts for mine till like September, October, so um, I never saw his video, but he definitely was you know, he did this before me and made a YouTube video of it, which is proof that he did it uh, before me easily. Which doesn't matter, but it's it's just interesting that someone else uh, came up with the same kind of concept and ideas, you know, independently. But um, not a big deal. But yeah, those are YouTubers that I like watching. Um, I watch heavily. So yeah, it's, you know, it's pretty messy. It's pretty dirty, but happy i wish i had a kill switch on each terminal my next wall actually i'm gonna do that i'm gonna put an actual kill switch because this isn't good enough just having a breaker is not a kill switch in my opinion because i measure the resistance and there's it's not it's not you know it's it's not an open circuit so don't use a breaker as a on off switch doesn't work so I'm gonna my next one maybe I'll remove a whole row of four that way I can fit everything um, with enough space I don't like how tight this is it looks ridiculous like mostly just the uh, BMS wires are annoying and yeah I could have hid them behind it or underneath it or put a cover on it but then that defeats the modular part of this, you know? That's that's the problem with that. So, uh, my next one, I'll remove wall and I'll add more space. So I'll put cutoffs. I also have um, little tabs down here. Right here, here, and here. Just so I can actually connect something if I wanted. Uh, my idea with that is that I was going to make it so you could just extend one wall and make it even longer, but I I don't think that's a very smart idea. Um, I'd rather I I think this is it's too heavy. It's I think this system like this is the limitation. These units all here they're the limitation to doing that. I mean, you could do it. It's no big deal. And then you could fit one extra row of batteries. Um, but I think it's it's not necessary at all and it's not what I'm going for. I want cheap, modular, easy to fix, easy to diagnose, easy to replace. I want everything to be easy about my system and uh, that doesn't add to it. But yeah. I um, ran this ground wire and it goes up to here, onto here, which is really stupid because the ground wire is really thin and it goes behind this foam. So halfway through it, I was like, well, that's stupid. What if something happens, that wire melts? Is it going to catch all that on fire? I don't know. I, I doubt it's actually needed. I don't know what that ground wire does, but... Um, yeah, whatever. I put it in anyways. Might as well be safe. Um, actually, there's nothing safe about that. It should have been this size of wire on the ground to be to be safe. But whatever, you know. It's not like there's a breaker. I should maybe have two breakers on each wall. It's only ten bucks, right? Might as well put a breaker on the negative and the positive. And put a shut off on the negative and the positive while I'm at it. Yeah, better safe than sorry. But anyways, uh, hope you liked the video. I know it's long, but whatever. 
Who cares? <laughs> Anyways, have a good one, guys. Bye.